The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Our viewers, good morning. Uh, my name is Norman Tumhembise. <coughs> I'm very, very humbled to also uh, today to meet and um, have some kind of a conversation with uh, Professor Pierre O. Lumumba. To me, he's one of uh, Africa's uh, greatest and he will forever be. And uh, fortunately, he also shares that name, a name uh, with the very person, uh, uh, Patricia Lumumba, whom I also take as my other icon. Uh, Prof, first of all, good morning and welcome to our viewers. Good morning, Norman. Good morning, Glad to see you again. Nice to see you too. Thank you. Um, yeah, once again, you're in Uganda. And Thank you. Come to other home. Yes, I'm indeed. Sure. It's a great thing in the country and the, the breeze itself. Thank you. We are aware that you, we, we are here to celebrate, uh, I think, 60th, mm -hmm. to commemorate the 60th mm -hmm. anniversary of uh, African Union mm -hmm. now, uh, rather, which started as Organization of African Unity. But in any case, before we even begin uh, to discuss the purpose for which you are here and so many other delegates, mm -hmm. was it even necessary to transit from um, organization of African unity and then African union? <laughs> <laughs> was there uh, no, the, the, the there are those who would say that a rose by any other name is a rose. Mm -hmm. But there was indeed a substantive reason for having the transition to the OA, from the OAU to the AU. But allow me to give you a little background. When 32 African heads of states and government sat in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia from the 23rd to the 25th days of May, the year 1963, hosted by the then Emperor Hail Selassie. It was the culmination of a process that had been going on because within the continent of Africa, there had been two groups. The group that took the view that post-independent African countries should unite immediately to form the United States of Africa. That group was led by the Osage for Kwame Nkrumah, and was known as the Casablanca group. There was another group which took the view that the continent should grow incrementally from regional bodies and ultimately a political union. It did not have a clear leader, but William Tubman, who was then the president of Liberia, did emerge as one of the key leaders, as indeed did Felix Ufebwanyi, of Cote d'Ivoire, they were called the Monrovia Group. Mm. So when they met in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, there were individuals who subscribed to the gradualist approach of the Monrovia Group and what I call the immediacy approach of Kwame Nkrumah. The organization of African unity in many ways marked a compromise by the Casablanca Group and it was seen as a victory for the Monrovia group. So it became a loose union. And for a long time, its only focus or its major focus was helping the countries that had not been independent to regain their independence, complete with the establishment of the wing that would deal with the struggle for independence in Dar es Salaam, in what was then uh, Tanganyika, later to become Tanzania, under the guidance of Mwalimu Julius Kambara Genyerere. So later, when the continent recognized that Kwame Nkrumah had been right, and it's important that on the sixth day of March, 1997, on the occasion of the celebration of the 40th anniversary of Ghana's independence, Kambarage Nyerere himself, who had been a gradualist, apologized to the Osage for Kwame Nkrumah. And he said, had we known we would have followed what Kwame said, what we had followed, what Kwame said, because it has now become a lot more difficult to unite because people yeah, have become like used to their sovereignty yeah. and the neo-colonial project is alive and well. So the movement started towards transitioning the organization of African unity, which was then being described merely as a toothless bulldog. And some of us said that it was not even a bulldog in the first place. It didn't even have teeth. 
<laughs> so the transition was then being uh, championed by people like Muammar al-Gaddafi of, of Libya, uh, Thabo Mbeki of South Africa, and Bouteflika of, uh, of, uh, of, of Algeria, and uh, uh, younger people such as Thomas uh, Isidore, Noel Sankara, were not quite with it, but thought in that particular direction. Mm -hmm. So the transition was meant to create a union that was stronger, a union that was more involved, a union which had its ultimate agenda as that of unity in the manner that was conceived by the Osagie for Kwame Nkrumah and others. And therefore, the transition was not artificial. It was actually meant to be a seismic, earthquake kind of movement into a new dispensation. If, my, if I may ask, don't you, um, some... Uh, some people out there also have uh, another thought that rather they set a lot of uh, uh, goals that they couldn't achieve. You know, there's when you, like in, in Africa here, they'll tell you, bite what you can swallow. Yeah. So sometimes someone who sets a very, very huge agenda, which is hard to, to perhaps achieve. Maybe it was a very huge dream for all of us, and perhaps that's why it hasn't worked, for lack of another word, like you have said that perhaps some of you describe this not even being a bulldog with even teeth. Maybe it was, it was a little dog, mm -hmm. a, a little toothless dog. <laughs> it couldn't even, not even back, yeah. rather just being there. Same for having a name. Don't you think they could, I mean, they set a very big agenda that was hard to achieve. They were working, you know, hurriedly to achieve hard things. No, 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 no. First you of know, all, they had countries that didn't have independence. Yes. They had countries that were still at war. They had countries that believed too much in the West. Yeah. Wasn't, don't you think that could have been the problem? No, not at all. Country? My own view is, and, and I think it is Kenya's Wangari Mutamadai who once said it, if your dream does not scare you, <laughs> not if does, your dream does not keep you awake, then don't dream at all. Your dreams must be scare big you, must and you. must scare you. And they, it must keep you awake. Let us not judge ourselves within short lifetimes. When you are thinking of Africa, think a thousand years from today. When you think a thousand years, then the dreams are too small. So that what we ought to do, as the saying goes, we go set out to eat an elephant. When you want to eat an elephant, you can't swallow the elephant. Yeah. You eat it piece by piece, piece mm -hmm. by piece. And that is what the continent of Africa is doing through initiatives such as Africa Agenda 2063. And in my view, that is even too soon. But you see, Prof, this mm. is the problem we have in Africa, for example. Mm. You will have, and I will, I will apply our, our country, mm. we will have Vision 2040. Mm. But even when you are planning for Vision 2040, you, have not, you still behave as if you are in 1900. Yes. By conduct, by yeah. policies, by your failure to execute some things. Take for instance, mm -hmm. I was telling colleagues before we came here, it is so sad that you'll reach Kenyatta International Airport mm -hmm. and Kenyans have to stamp in your passport when you're Ugandan. Absolutely. And it's just worrying. And then you wonder if you, cannot, if you can hardly have such uh, unity within these blocks. What about this whole big thing? Even when you say that mm. dreaming big is good, but also, I mean, being over ambitious with something that you may also fail to achieve. May also <laughs> become, may, may dis, I mean, it may discourage you also to ever dream again. No, no man, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't disagree with you. Many times we say with our mouth what we do not believe in our hearts. And I think that can be disheartening. Mm. But I want you to be a little bit more optimistic in the knowledge that in the life of any country there will be periods when you have individuals who are so selfish yeah. so myopic that they are incapable of seeing the big picture Even and them. therefore they mislead people and i've said this times without number that part of the problem of africa is that we have too many misleaders <laughs> masquerading as leaders you can see that personally i use the term leadership very rarely when i'm making reference to african <laughs> politicians mm. because in my view there are only a very few of them who are leaders so look at the kind of declaration that we have made for ourselves since we regained independence and even in the last few years we said about movement of people yeah. in the east african region why do i that's have to have a passport the, yeah basic free yeah, movement of people 
free movement of labor. But the truth is, we must not abandon those good things simply because we have been frustrated at this level or that level. If we think about this war as an intergenerational war, even if we make three steps forward and one step, of two steps backward, we'll have made a single step. Mm -hmm. And those of us who believe in the African project, those of us who believe that it's an intergenerational battle, our duty is to stand metaphorically on the hilltops and shout to the latter-day pharaohs and heralds and tell them that we will continue to shout until the day that the right thing is done. We must get into our political discourse and introduce hygiene into politics, which is not hygienic for the moment. It will be frustrating. It will be annoying. And that is what these crooks want to do. They want to annoy you. They want to frustrate you. They want you to lose hope. Once they have done that, then they sit back and say, we told you. Yeah. But we you told you. I have this question to ask mm. from you. You people that mm. have that vision, um, and uh, I'm sure as they follow tonight, you were alive then, though mm. young, mm -hmm. and so many other people of your caliber. But then it goes back to whether or not you have done your best mm -hmm. to educate us, our generation, to understand these basics. The reason for which, for example, uh, then OAU was founded, mm. in comparison with what maybe European Union has achieved and others. Because some, I mean, for some reason, it's like young people do not even understand, like, is there even need for unity? Like, have, do you think our leaders in Africa, for example, have done their best? Because if I may also ask, mm. I wouldn't want to, to quote you or quote mm. others that mm. invited you here. You would wonder how many young people are invited in this conference mm. itself. Mm. Yeah? At the end of it all, we shall see all of you gray hair, gray hair, mm. professors, professors. What mm. about you, you university students? Mm. How many young people have been invited in such conferences to also share? Because the, 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 the United Africa literally is for us and also the youngest generations. So, I mean, have you done your best? Norman, <laughs> let me tell you, I was in Arusha, uh, Tanzania on 22nd of May and uh, the festival, first up to celebrate African culture and art. Mm. What made me happy is that we had people drawn from as far as Costa Rica, Guyana, different parts of the world, and they were school children, age 12, deliberately invited so that we begin to grow a young um, army of young men and women. Right now, only yesterday, or the 20, uh, yesterday, uh, the 23rd of the day of March, of May rather, I wrote to the chair of the Committee of Experts for East African Confederation, the retired Justice Odoki. Mm. And I told him, I am aware that you are in Kenya collecting the views of Kenyans on the Constitution on Confederation of East Africa. Why is it that your committee is composed almost exclusively of retirees? Where are the young professionals? who can bring new knowledge. Of course, he has not replied. I hope he does. So you are making a valid point that we must not continue preaching to the choir. We must, in the nature of things, in the nature of things, begin to bring in younger people so that they are inducted into this agenda because their induction is what is going to create an army of young men and women who understand that this battle is intergenerational. But should we judge ourselves harshly? The Europe that we keep on talking about, there was a time when in Europe, in, the, in, the, in England, there, was a war, there were wars for 100 years, the War of the Roses. Mm -hmm. The post-colonial Africa is only slightly above 60 years. In the case of countries such as Zimbabwe and mm -hmm. South Sudan, they have not even attained the age of 30. Mm -hmm. So let us ju not judge ourselves harshly. I think if you were to look at what has been achieved in the last 60 years, there are good things that have been achieved. We could have done better. When you see us criticizing or critiquing African governments, it is not for lack of appreciation of the positives that have been done, but it is because we think we could have done better. That we are fighting as lightweights, lightweights when we should be fighting as heavyweights. This is our quarrel. It's not because you are fighting, you may be fighting very well in your lightweight division, but for how long? 
Shall you remain a light, lightweight and a featherweight and a welterweight? We want you to be in light heavy. You, you, you yeah. have, we have heard this in, um, in uh, musical artists. Mm -hmm. They tell you this one is forever an upcoming artist. Surely. So you remain an upcoming artist up, up to 60 years. That where is the up <laughs> and where is the coming? And, 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 and I think that uh, the, I, I have said this at one time. This state of sustained childhood in which Africa finds herself never being separated from the diaper is a bad state. We, we are mature children. We cannot accept that. And our leaders, so-called, are the ones who keep us in this state where we are either the poorest countries in the world, developing countries in the world. We are always in a state of being lo using longer term to describe our poverty. And yet, ironically polite. and paradoxically, our leaders are some of the richest in the world, but our countries are some of the poorest in yeah, the, the world. And rich. that, to me, is what I know frustrates you. I know you to be a young Pan-Africanist, and you ask the question, are there enough young Pan-Africanists who are emerging? I travel this continent, mm -hmm. and let me tell you, they are emerging young men and women from the continent of Africa who are much better than us. But suffocated by the same you people. Oh, you will, they will be suffocated. <laughs> if you are not suffocated, you don't grow. You must learn to breathe without oxygen. Claim your space. Yes, so you've got to. If you want oxygen in order to breathe, then you are not worth breathing. <laughs> so in my view, you must go out there. You will be suffocated. They will maim you. They'll gag you. But then you must shake up your head and tell them, you gagged me, you tried to maim me, but I'm even stronger. We want you people to work on steroids, which confounds and amazes your enemies. That is why it is also your duty to ensure that as you are being mentored, you mentor other, other people. Yeah. It is the great Mohandas Gandhi who said, you may kill me. You even may have my dead body, but you never take my dignity. Yes, and the more, true. if you kill the Mahatma, there will be many Mahatmas. So that there is no room for virtue. Oh, yes. there <laughs> cannot be a vacuum. And that to me is the message that I continue to hear through the vicissitudes of time from people like Kwame Nkrumah. When Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown in 1966, and when he is now the honorary co-president of Guinea at the invitation of Ahmed Sekoture, mm. He writes many books, but one of the most painful books that he must have written is The Lost Years. He is watching his own country across yes. the border. He is watching coup after coup, Ghana being taken backwards, and there is nothing he can do about it. But today, the yes. names that we speak about, as I speak across this continent, which name do I speak more than the other? Which names? Mm -hmm. It is Kwame Nkrumah. And Julius yeah. Kambarage Nyerere, and yeah. Samora Moises Marshall, yeah. and Thomas Noel Isidore Sankara, yeah. because they lived for something. Yeah. So that is the spirit. So when the organization of African unity, now known as the African Union, is celebrating its 60th anniversary, I don't want them to celebrate. I want them to commemorate. There is nothing to celebrate. There is only something to commemorate. And when they are doing so, I hope that on the 25th day when they assemble there, the leaders will take time to reflect and they'll be saying that we have given unto ourselves Africa Agenda 2063 and the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, but these are only foundational going forward. We must look at Africa that will be bequeathed to our young men and women. And the young men and women must also not wait yeah. to be called to the dinner table. If they don't invite you to the dinner they table, storm. invite yourself, <laughs> storm the dinner table, but do so in a manner that will open their eyes, not evoke their anger, anger <laughs> and then make them destroy you. No, 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 Prof, let's go back to the, to the real, real basics now. Mm. Let's, for example, talk about silencing the guns. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have overheard a lot of Ghani noise. Mm. Are there specifics that in your view mm. you think that AU has at least done and say you have this exact example and you say there was this war, AU intervened rather than having you here UN, UN peacekeeping mission. I mean, 
are there those specifics? Even Congo here itself. I was watching uh, your friend's uh, video, uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, Kambarge Nyerere. Mm. He w gave a very, very brilliant uh, suggestion and proposal in regards to the war, the Banyamurengi, and mm. I mean, the, 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 between the Rwanda and yeah, Burundi, mm. rather, Rwanda and Congolese conflict about the Banyamurengi. And it's like these people migrated a long time, they have found themselves there, but this is literally Tutsi. But then you find wars, I mean, over a smallest thing that any other country would solve. Are there those specifics that you could give examples and say, hey, you has done this and you have, you can, I mean, you can just stamp your, yourself and like, they, are, they have achieved, they are good, so we should celebrate them. You know, as you are asking the question, my mind was searching <laughs> and my mind has come out blank. Why? <laughs> Because the efforts that they have made have not been exclusively, look at the recent Tigre war, yeah, yeah, sure. which was no, led no. by President Olusegun Obasanjo. Mm. I know Olusegun Obasanjo did a good job there. But in the background, you'll find they have, the Americans are still there. Mm. Look at the conflict in Cameroons, mm. the conflict in Central African Republic the skirmishes and the conflict in Mozambique, mm. the conflicts in the Sahelian region, Burkina the conflict Faso, in uh, South uh, Sudan, in Burkina Faso, the Mali, ongoing in Mali. Mali, in Niger, and all those Gambia. other, in the Gambia, all those conflicts, you always have what I call foreign intervention it's and no, interference. It's no longer an invisible hand, it's a visible hand. <laughs> unfortunate, it's no longer even subtle. And it is unfortunate that we have not done so because once again, African Union is under-resourced. There are few African leaders who second, are pan-Africanists. Are we under-resourced or we, we, we mismanage our resources? Even we are under-resourced and even the little we have, we mismanage. So it is a combination of all that. You'll find that the amount of money that we pay uh, to the African Union, we said, I think, that we would contribute 0.25% of our budget to the African Union. How many countries actually pay? With the consequence that the African Union is still being supported by the Chinese, including the construction of our own headquarters. So my own view is that we could do better. Mm. But once again, I want to ensure that you do not lose your enthusiasm and you do not lose your faith in institutions. These are the weak moments of the African Union. You and me can critique and we must critique with the good intention of strengthening. We must not critique with the intention of Breaking demoralizing the and respect. paralyzing. So some of us, when we do this, it's what I call tough love. We are telling African Post Union, criticism. these are the weak areas. We know your strength, but we are not going to sing about your strength. We want you to deal with your weaknesses, because when you deal with your weaknesses, you are going to become stronger. But we believe not in destroying those institutions, but helping them become better. Because history has taught us that even those that we look towards as being successful had their moments of depression had their moments of failure or apparent failure, but they lifted themselves up. There is a speech that I love by Martin Luther King Jr. where he says, sometimes I feel disappointed. But then he concludes, because he was a Christian, he concludes by saying, but there is balm in Gilead, and that balm cures. And I want to repeat that there is balm in Gilead. Perhaps I should say that there's a balm in Uganda, which if applied to our wounds, would heal mm -hmm. Africa. Uh, about the borderless countries, mm -hmm. I mean, you, uh, uh, even with these small blocks, I mm -hmm. mean, you'll hear IGAD, you'll hear Comesa, you'll hear East African community. Do you think it is even achievable? Uh, it takes us back to having grabbed a, a, a bigger chunk that you cannot mm. swallow. And like, so you are there, we are stuck with it. It's too big, it's good, like the food is very delicious, but you have, I mean, beaten a very big chunk to, <laughs> to swallow. Do you think it is even achievable, apparently? And if yes, you think, how long would that take? Or what is even blocking it to be even achievable? Let me uh, tell you, there is those who, when you, when you hear we talk about African unity, we are not naive, we are not simplistic. We are not saying that one day we shall wake up and then we'll say there are no borders. No borders, borders will be there. 
Mm. Even in a united Africa, we'll still have nations. There'll be mm. the Buganda nation, there'll yeah. be Ovambo nation, Ovibundu nation, the Temne nation, the Yoruba nation, the Luo nation, the Bunyoro Kitara, mm. the Kakwa. Those nations, those, is, those are the beauty. What we are saying is that our continent's economics and politics will not be defined by the negatives of those engagements. They'll be defined by the strengths so that the cultural beauty of the Toro will be brought to the table in Uganda and Uganda's beauty will be brought to the table in Ethiopia and Ethiopia's beauty will be brought to the table in Nukchat in Mauritania. Is it achievable? Yes, it is achievable. Will it eliminate conflict? No. Human being and human interaction is about conflict and mediating conflict. In fact, I dare say, that even in heaven, there is this constant conflict between God and Satan, which does not appear to end. It is, can only be mediated. <laughs> so if we are that. created in the image of God, and even in heaven itself there the is conflict, conflict, how can it be that we think that there will be a conflictless Africa? Our duty is to mediate that conflict in a manner that makes us survive in a dignified manner. If I may also ask, uh, in regards, do you think... Uh, uh, like Kano Muammar Gaddafi was misunderstood or he didn't take a lot of time to teach and explain to the rest of the leaders because he was so much pro a common currency and of course if you read from uh, I mean behind the curtains they'll tell you that's why for some reason of course amongst others why his I mean his leadership was put down and if you look at the present Libya it is just worrying is it I mean is it what these gentlemen in the West are proud of simply destroying even the little that we have, or yes. we simply do not understand even Let what we me want tell to you. <laughs> to How many Sekotore of Guinea once said, when you hear a white man praising you as a leader of Africa, you must be very worried. <laughs> It means you are betraying your people. The moment they begin praising All you. All the big monsters, CNN is saying you are a great, great <laughs> leader, BBC, Radio Dochevel, then you must be very well. And your people, the people you lead must now begin to know that you have taken the path of betrayal. And Zambia's Simon Kapwepwe once said, let us be very wary of the white man when he comes back as an investor. Yeah. He is a Trojan horse whose greatest desire is to continue controlling you at all times. Was Gaddafi misunderstood? He was understood very well. And because they understood him, that he meant what he was what saying, saying yeah. and he was prepared to do it, and he had the resources to do it, they had to eliminate him. And because he was eliminated, Libya has never been the same again. And it will take time for yeah, Libya really to different. stabilize. And I'm sure when they sit in Washington, D.C., and they see Libya, they say, we yeah. did it. Doesn't that also now, I hope we are not conflicting ourselves now, mm. rather contradicting ourselves. Mm. In the event that they have destroyed a big, a big wing, that heavyweight, yeah. Yeah. what about these underdogs? What, I mean, <laughs> when they even <laughs> feel, they would be like, if they could destroy him, let's just keep mum, don't even talk about a united Africa with a, I mean, a common currency. Let, let us just manage our small island and until further notice. Have you seen hyenas hunt? <laughs> really. They hunt as a pack. Mm. And when they hunt as a pack, they kill a lion. When they hunt as a pack, they can kill an elephant, they can kill a giraffe, they can yeah. kill any animal. Mm. Africans must learn something from the hyena. But there must be that courageous hyena that will take on the mantle and, and makes that first attempt. That is you and me. <laughs> Why can't you be that courageous hyena? And you are. Humble. It is yes. Because so it is us. Don't look to anybody else. Literally, Prof, it confuses yeah. all of us yeah. that they will invite you yeah. to Voice of America or BBC yeah. to discuss, I hear, focus on Africa, but yeah. discuss in Washington. Yes. Like, the whole continent does not even have one radio station that discusses problems that are affecting this conf I mean, but, this continent. But, but your, own, you, I mean, your own alternative media is also looking at that. Now, uh -huh. let's be very practical. Yeah. The time is now. I no longer, when you see me speak myself, I critique. Yeah, yeah, sure. Why do I critique and why do I go into history? I go into history to give context to my prescription. Mm. Do I think I have the monopoly of knowledge and wisdom? No, I don't. You have the courage do I have ideas? 
Do I think they should be articulated? Do I know? Do I think sometimes I may be wrong? Yes, I do. But I want you to convince me that I'm wrong by giving me alternative set of mm, facts. Yeah. And if you have a superior idea and superior ideas, I'll abandon my own and I come to you. Yeah. Am I doing something about it in my own small way? I'm now working with young men and women across yeah. the continent of Africa yeah, sure. to make my contribution. Can mm -hmm. we convert in your TV station to be, a pro to be that thing? Yes, we should. So yeah. the time is now, particularly for your generation. Nyerere said it in 1997. Our generation's duty was to go out and eliminate the white man. Mm. The next generation must now do something else. Beyond, because now white men are no longer here. They are no longer there, <laughs> is to ensure that they fight to liberate Africa totally. And deal with when you hear people well. talking about economic freedom, yeah. that is the next frontier, mm. to be economically free. Because he or she who feeds you controls you. Definitely. We have seen our presidents, presidents, African presidents, I mean, packed in buses in Europe. Like you know, <laughs> one, they are the one. The other time they were saying that, and after that they go to the coronation of the King of England, and they are treated exactly in the like, same way. Today like I, I tweeted uh, when I said that today, when you see Af European journalists from Europe and America, mm -hmm. from CNN, from Al Jazeera, from Radio Dochevel, when they are interviewing our president, they are so condescending, so rude yeah, to yeah, our yeah, president. Yeah, sure. yeah. And our presidents, I'm happy with President Kagame and President Museveni in this regard, Sometimes. and even recently President Ruto, mm. and even uh, uh, President uh, Hage Gengob. I listened to them when they were being interviewed, and they shut them down and told them, please, ask me the things that brought me here. LGBTQ is not the thing you are just yeah, about yeah, to yeah. ask me. Sex against the order of nature is wrong. But you, uh, again, you have, um, I mean, you have... Um provoked me to ask. Mm. We have our own, some young man in my view that we, I mean, Africa had some hope in, and this is, um, and, uh, I mean, uh, Malema. Yeah. I, I mean, I watched him, I couldn't believe what he was, I mean. Juju, <laughs> Juju is my friend, and we'll have that, con have we, 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 we'll, we'll have that conversation with him. I think uh, Malema... Is he no, because he who no, feeds no, you. No. Let, let, let me... I think Malema is my very good friend. Yeah, and I, think, I mean, I've seen you I, so many occasions. I, I, I think that he has a positive agenda which I want to identify with, in terms which I identify with. The economic freedom yeah. movement mm. is, is something that we ought to support. I've heard him saying that uh, LGBTQ is fine, and I don't want to contradict <laughs> him, bef to, 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 to criticize him, before I engage him, I want to understand him on one on one. Because on I am this thing <laughs> called AG, LGBTQ, Norman. It comes with lots of, I mean, I don't know, lots of money, lots of. Gay. Yeah, transgender, trans. What? Transgender, I mean, they have, they have, they are, queer, and then intersex. The alphabetical, uh, uh, alphabetical letters, I mean, the, every now and again they keep adding one more. Because it's in with every L holy <laughs> book, even if you want to be religious and spiritual about it, the Bible says it is sex against the order of nature. Yeah. The Bhagavad Gita says it is sex against the order of nature. The Quran says it is sex against the order of nature. So, if you are to ask me a single question, which you are not just about to ask me, are you homophobic? My answer is yes. <laughs> Do I think that those who belong to that Should club be ought to everything. be treated and cured? They are sick. They ought to be cured. Should be, uh, they should have, and I, I mean, think that is the point at which we should stop. No, uh, <laughs> before we stop, before we stop, um, you, you, I mean, you, uh, you innovators, yes. uh, as they call themselves. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, uh, we have to connect also this to yes. this discussion as well. Artificial intelligence. Some scientists have now even manufactured men and manufactured women. And <laughs> before you even finish the war against yeah. LGBTQI, yeah. there is now another war artificial women and artificial men because women is stress, because also men is stress. <laughs> when, 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 you know, our, Norman, our, <laughs> let me tell you this. Um, I believe that human society has always grown through technology. Mm. We were is agrarian. Is technology ne necessary? Not in necessarily. View? In yeah. my view, we move from... Uh, uh, first, so-called first industrial revolution, second industrial revolution, third industrial revolution. We are now in between the fourth industrial revolution and the fifth industrial revolution. But remember that it is not 
every other technological discovery of our, or advancement that is Useful. good for humanity. Nuclear fusion mm. improved humanity, but it is a nuclear bomb that destroyed Destroy Hiroshima it. and Nagasaki. Mm. Artificial intelligence is a good thing, but we must deploy it within ethical limits. You limit the and level that is what we must deal with, because otherwise we will be creating a Frankenstein monster which we cannot control. Yeah, so it is the duty of Africa to ensure that we consume artificial intelligence which we control, but do so in a manner that is going to be beneficial for the continent of Africa. Thank you very much. Humble, God sir. bless Thanks, you. Thank you, sir. God bless uh, you. We, uh, we <laughs> ask, thank you a lot for thank really you. keeping it uh, with the time to Yeah. Every when we have an opportunity, we shall forever engage um, Professor Pierre Olumumba to share, but of course, young people, he's one person that you should, uh, I mean, read his books, follow his uh, speeches. Most of them are precise on to the point. If you, re if you want to keep, I mean, uh, hold, uh, uh, keep following and, you know, believing in what the West brings onto your table, pick what is right and drop what is silly, for lack of another word. And also, that, that does not mean that everything that is African is also good. Absolutely, you are There right. are some African things that are not good, and there are also Western things that are good. And even so, Chinese. And Chinese yeah, as Because good. we are no longer just dealing with Ch Westerners. The Chinese, yeah, the Chinese are here, the Russians here are here, the Qataris are here, the Turks are here. It is our duty to make a choice. If Pick. you are given fish menu, and snakes, mm. you must be able to determine <laughs> that which is better, snake or fish. Great, yeah. It is never that obvious. And yet either or. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's keep in touch. My name is Norman Tumhimbise. Keep it alternative digital. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Once again. God bless you. Please. Thank you. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.